I'll reach out to them and we'll see how many of these issues we can get addressed. I'm shocked at how well this telescope did. Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of the Things to See with a Telescope series, including my new book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope. This box contains the Explore Scientific First Light 102mm refractor. At least, I hope it does. There are literally no labels. Anyway, I purchased this telescope used for $210 US dollars from B&H Photo, and I'm curious how it stacks up against Celestron's Inspire 100AZ, as well as Explore Scientific's other popular beginner telescope, the 114mm First Light Newtonian. <coughs> okay, pause the video for a second. Why am I comparing this fancy refractor to this $229 reflector? Well, here's why because the refractor in the box shares the same product page on Explorer Scientific's website as this $329 model, which is actually a completely different telescope despite having the same aperture, which is something they need to fix. At this point in the video, I didn't realize the used model I had ordered was a more premium version of this telescope. Now back to the video. Stay tuned after this review where we'll take these telescopes to a nearby park and put them to the test. This is Learn to Stargaze. Before we unbox the First Light Refractor, I want to talk about how I buy telescopes in general. I've had several people comment that they could never afford such and such a telescope. And yeah, the reality is that with telescopes, you get what you pay for. But at the same time, telescopes don't really age, so a used telescope is generally just as good as a new one. There is a lot of junk in both the new and used telescope market. I'd estimate that only about 5% of telescopes listed for sale are even worth considering, regardless of the price. Before shopping for a used telescope, you should already have decided exactly which telescope you're looking for. Never buy the first telescope that fits your budget. That's why I wanna talk about some of the scopes that I've bought used, where I got them, and how much I paid. Let's start with the Celestron StarSense Explorer LT114. I picked this telescope up used for $100 on B&H Photo. Although I don't like the optics, the StarSense technology is quite impressive. Moving on, this is my C8. I love this telescope now for visual observation. I bought this telescope on eBay last year for $335 plus shipping and tax to Canada. This is the Celestron AVX mount. I originally purchased this with the intent of doing astrophotography, but I have since upgraded. This mount was purchased for $589 on B&H Photo, uh, and it was used. Then we have this eight inch carbon fiber Newtonian by Explore Scientific. I purchased this last year on B&H Photo, used for $399, plus shipping and tax to Canada. I also have an eight inch Dobsonian that's currently in California with a friend. I purchased that on Craigslist for $200. It came with all sorts of cool accessories, including a two inch eyepiece. And this past summer, I purchased a six inch Dubsonian on Facebook Marketplace for $150. I then donated that scope to a St. Jude fundraiser. In the very unlikely case that there's an issue with your telescope, the companies are usually very helpful, even if you purchase the telescope used. So as I said in the introduction, I found this telescope on B&H Photos used section for $209. Now it was originally priced a bit higher, $250 perhaps, but they couldn't find the eyepiece and dropped the price. This telescope did not come with a mount. Now this is common for more premium telescopes, but generally beginner telescopes come with a mount. That said, I have this twilight mount right here, so I didn't need a mount anyway. Now new, this telescope is generally sold with a mount. You can see it here on Explore Scientific's website for $699. You can opt to get this telescope by itself for about $350. Let's open the box and see what we've got. Okay, I'm super excited to see what's inside. Cue a time lapse. Wow, look at the packaging. There was not any foam at all on top of the telescope. All right, let's open the accessory box first. Okay, we've got an iPhone adapter made of suction cups and it came with a red dot finder. It has a battery, but this battery is dead. All right, the big reveal. I've gotta be extra careful because the uh, mount adapter is not connected to the telescope right now. Okay, oh no. You can see that it is damaged here. So the um, bracket that connects the telescope to the mount 
uh, is, is broken. Here we can see this one works, so we should be able to use this telescope with just the one connection here. I'm gonna take the telescope out of the wrapping here. Let's take a look at the primary lens. All right, I'm gonna put it on the tripod first and then we'll try to take the cap off. And let's put the finder in. Oh, the screws for the finder, one is missing and one has no head on the screw. So I'm gonna see if I can get it out with my fingers and just slide the finder in uh, without them for now. Two of the screws to put in the diagonal are, are completely bent, so those will need to be replaced. Usually the focuser knobs are on the bottom of the telescope, you know, opposite the finder. So we'll have to take a look at that. Now this assembly should spin. Oh, it's got some resistance though. Let's try to spin it the other way. It does not want to go. All right, so what they didn't tell me is that it was missing the diagonal, but don't worry, I have one in the garage. I'll just have to go out in the rain and go get it. <laughs> okay, so this is the two inch diagonal that should have come with this telescope. Uh, this is my like fifth or sixth Explore Scientific telescope. So fortunately I had this in the garage. So you can see on top, it has a one and a quarter inch um, adapter right here. And that's for one and a quarter inch eyepieces. For example, this super plus right here would go in the adapter like this. Whereas if you were using a larger eyepiece, you can take the adapter out, even with the eyepiece if you want. And here's a two inch eyepiece. And that would just go in like that without the adapter. Okay, so let's see if this fits into the telescope and stays. Okay, so because these screws here are, are bent, they do not turn and I can't lock this diagonal in place. We've got the diagonal in place and I got it to stay by using the screw from the adapter. All right, so let's put the two inch eyepiece in. Okay, I figured out what was wrong with the finder. It looks like the little red dot was simply pressed into the finder itself. So if I reach in with my finger and pull it up, I can now see it there on the screen. Okay, so I need to write Explore Scientific and tell them about the broken mounting assembly the missing two inch diagonal, the screws that were bent on the diagonal, and the missing screws from the finder scope. It breaks my heart to know that a telescope was built and maybe never saw starlight, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe is wounded or whatever. Um, but I assume the optics are okay and yeah, the, opt the optics look great. I mean, because of the weather, we haven't we haven't tested it yet, but um, this is my actually my third Explore Scientific 102 millimeter model. So I had the one that had the shorter focal length and the doublet, and then I had the triplet as well. So oh, you yeah. could work for me. Right? <laughs> yeah, and send me that email. I'll make sure it gets handled um, correctly through the customer service channel, and we'll get your scope back up into the sky where it belongs. <laughs> Now for some stats on this telescope. This telescope has a focal length of 1,000 millimeters, so that's one meter, and 102 millimeters of aperture. That's the diameter of the primary lens, which means it's running a focal ratio of f9.8. Based on the aperture, the maximum useful magnification of this telescope is 200 times. This is estimated by doubling the aperture in millimeters. Remember, to get the magnification of a telescope, you divide the focal length of the telescope by the focal length listed on the eyepiece, then you multiply it by any Barlow's. For example, if you're viewing Saturn and you really want to get an up-close view, you might work up to a 10mm eyepiece with a 2x Barlow. This would give you about 200 times magnification. Any higher magnification and the object will look worse, not better. Personally, I rarely go over 100 times magnification when using a small telescope anyway. The website also claims that this telescope is good for astrophotography. I really think they should clarify here though. I'm guessing they're talking about lunar and planetary astrophotography. But maybe they are talking about deep sky astrophotography. I don't know, let's test it. So I'm gonna take this telescope, put it on this mount, this is the EQ6R Pro, now I'm going to take all the camera gear off this telescope, the Sharpstar 61, and put it on this telescope.
All right, it's nighttime and it was quite an adventure getting this set up to do astrophotography. But I got it in focus because the telescope was missing spacers. I ended up putting the diagonal in before I put the camera in and I was able to achieve focus. And look at that. There's our first exposure of the bubble nebula. I'm gonna let this go for maybe even a couple hours and we'll see how good this image turns out. Okay, so we've taken 34 exposures of the bubble nebula and it is looking incredible. Just look at this. And if we go to the side, you can see a open cluster here that's also looking fabulous. The stars are round, they're not discolored. I'm shocked at how well this telescope did. All right, let's set this telescope up to view the night sky. Okay, so we're outside, it's daytime, and we're going to align the finder to the telescope. Now this is best done during the day using a distant chimney. With the finder on, you wanna make sure you can see the dot, and the knob on the side moves the finder dot left and right, and the knob on the back moves the finder dot up and down and you wanna get that dot centered right on the top of that chimney. Then what you do is you confirm just by going back and forth between the telescope and the chimney that the dot and the telescope are pointed at exactly the same spot. This is Haley testing out the telescope. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is there a chimney in there? It's in there. Okay. While we wait for dark, our next step will be to come up with a list of targets. And there's no better way to do that than using my new book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope. I'll place a link in the description. This book takes the over 200 year old list of Messier objects and organizes them by season, so there's always something cool to see. With custom star maps for every target, finding these objects has never been easier. And if you complete this list and document your progress in the book, the Astronomical League or the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada will send you a certificate for your accomplishment. There's details in the back of the book. And if you have kids, definitely check out 50 things to see with a telescope kids and you'll understand why this book is one of the most popular stargazing books well ever night there was a patch of clear sky I got the telescope out put it on the deck put an eyepiece in and was amazed at the clarity of the view through this scope there were no aberrations that I could see so here are some final comments on the explore first light 102 refractor the 1000 millimeter version as you just saw we took this telescope to the park and somewhere between 50 and 100 people got to use it we asked them to compare the view between the explore scientific telescope and the Celestron Inspire and most folks couldn't tell the difference, and this makes sense as both telescopes share the same aperture. The real advantage of the Explore Scientific Scope is that it's a much more versatile design. It can take those large two-inch eyepieces, and when paired with the twilight mount, you get to use the slow motion controls. And when placed on a premium mount, it seems to do a pretty okay job at astrophotography too. The downside is that it's a long telescope, and that makes it susceptible to wind and general shakiness. Now, besides the issues I faced with this used telescope, there were a few things about the scope that surprised me. First, this telescope is really big. You do want a large mount to hold it, or even pay a little extra and get a go-to mount. The second thing I realized is that the person who buys the 1000 millimeter version of the scope is probably looking at a $1,000 investment after they get the mount, pay the tax, and invest in a two inch eyepiece. I do consider this a nice beginner telescope, but the price point is well above average for the aperture. Now, if you compare this scope to an eight inch Dubsonian, which generally runs below $500, the Dubsonian actually takes up quite a bit less space in your house. And if judged squarely on aperture, the Dubsonian is far more powerful. That said, if you don't mind the length, this is a really solid telescope. And in my opinion, it's also a really beautiful design. And if you like to stargaze from a chair and like to use those slow motion controls, this is a really great option. Now some follow-up comments on the condition of this particular used telescope. Now I wrote BNH Photo where I purchased the scope and let them know about the issues. They refunded me an additional $100. And this was after I talked to Scott at Explore Scientific, which means so far I really only paid $109 out of pocket plus tax and shipping. All in all, I'm guessing it will cost about $300 to make this telescope whole again. Now whether I pick up the cost for some of that has yet to be determined. After my call with Scott and a follow-up email, I still haven't heard back. 
but in this particular case, I probably would have been better off buying this telescope new. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on my experience with a used Explore First Light 102 millimeter, 1000 millimeter focal length refractor. If you have any of my books, please leave a note in the comments. I love to hear from my readers. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up.